What is up guys, Austin Nurcho here and this is another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and cover Raw and Nitro from this week in 1997. So this week we're starting out with November 24th, 1997 and we have Raw number 235 and Nitro number 115. So as usual we will start with Raw and then move on to Nitro. So with Raw first, again this is Raw 235, I don't know if I said that correctly or not, but it took place in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Carolina and it drew drew a 3.1 rating and so to kick off the show so this is now two weeks after the Montreal Screwjob so we're still dealing with that sort of stuff but this is where it actually like starts to like deal with stuff related to that more in depth or something but it starts off with the show starting and it starts playing with Rick Rude's music and out comes Harvey Whippleman and he's the like little like name tag screen or whatever says handsome Harvey and so he's supposed to be you know like ripping off Rick Rude and so he's dressed in the suit like Rick Rude carrying a briefcase and everything and so he comes out doing Rick Rude stick saying you know what I would like now is for all you fat lazy overweight you know all that sort of stuff and he introduces DX and so DX comes out and as soon as they get in the ring Sean looks at him and I he says something I don't remember exactly what to say but he like kicks him and like pushes him down and then throws him out of the ring he says wow that was hard to find a replacement or something like that you know saying that Rick Rude really didn't serve any purpose and stuff kind of and so this is you know playing off how Rick Rude was showed up in Nitro last week and stuff and um you know because it was the famous info episode where he showed up on both Raw and Nitro and so they're just kind of poking fun at Rick Rude leaving and so um DX is in the ring and they start to cut a promo and stuff and Sean's talking about how he regrets the screw job and that he takes full responsibility for it and so he's got like this sad look on his face somewhat similar to what he did when he did the whole I lost my smile speech but he's not like crying or whatever like it looked like I believe he was then but he's got a really sad look on his face and he's down and stuff and uh Sean mentions that Brett is still under contract until November 30th so we have about a week left of that and um tonight he's gonna bring Brett out and they're gonna make up and settle their issues that they had and he talks you know that he's been in contact with Brett and they've talked about stuff but they're gonna come out tonight and resolve their issues like I said and he said tonight we'll either end with a handshake or a fight so um that sets up for what's gonna happen happen later on tonight and then from there they leave the ring and then it goes into our first match which is the legion of doom taking on the new age outlaws and so the legion of doom come out first and then it's the new age outlaws and when they come out they're wearing shoulder pads and stuff just like the lod and so as they're like standing on the ramp i think road dog starts to do his thing the lod jump out the ring and go running up the ramp after them and then grab a hold of them you know bring them back down to the ring and then they start the match uh but one point in the match road dog ends up hitting hawk in the face with the tag title belt and then at one point animal starts to go for a flying shoulder tackle but billy gunn is able to duck it and so animal hits the ref instead so you know like bounce off the rope goes to do a shoulder tackle billy gunn ducks and he um animal flies into the referee taking the ref out and then soon after that the lod set up to do their doomsday device on billy gunn but road dog ends up hitting animal in the back with a chair so he ends up dropping Billy Gunn and Anna Hawk jumps down off the top rope and goes running after Road Dog and Billy able is able to get the roll up on Animal and at this point a new ref like comes running out to the ring and he counts the pin so the New Age Outlaws are the new tag champs and so they immediately grab the titles they run up the ramp through the back and it shows them getting in a car in the backstage you know parking lot area. And then they start to drive away and then they have to stop because a limo is pulling in and the limo moves out of the way and so they take off. So they're just getting out of there before the LOD can do anything in retaliation for them taking the titles from them. But um, so it was just kind of funny that they took off like that. And then so from there it goes to like questioning what that limo is because it shows it pulling up and stopping. And commentaries mentioned, you know, I wonder who could be in that limo. And they're like, everyone's here. I don't know who else it could be. And so they're then start speculating that it's probably Brett in there. So, you know, kind of showing that or pushing on the idea that Brett is here tonight. Then next up after commercial, we have Goldust coming down to the ring and he's in a wheelchair and he's being pushed out by a nurse and he has like his arm in a cast and all sorts of stuff and so he comes out and he's talking um i think michael cole ends up talking to him i believe it is i don't remember can't remember exactly what or who it is but they start talking to him and uh he, gold dust 
mentions that he has a broken bone and when he went to get it checked out he found out he was a paraplegic and then this morning he woke up and could move at all so now he's a quadriplegic and so he's just going on with all this ridiculous stuff and at one point uh he asks like i said i think it's michael cole it could be someone else but just someone's interviewing him and he's like could you could you help me and cross my legs and so like he's got no shoes and he's just wearing like a um kind of like a uh hospital gown type thing and so he has the person like pick his leg up and put it on top of his other leg and stuff and it looks like he's possibly you know i'm sure he is but not wearing underwear or anything it's just supposed to be really weird and uh so it's just really going on weird stuff with Goldust. and he still has the face paint on with the fu on the cheeks and stuff and then he asks nurse he's like could you put some rubbing alcohol on my neck that's the only thing that like helps me feel good or something like that so the lady starts putting alcohol on her hands and starts rubbing his neck and he's going like "Ooh, that feels good and all sorts of stuff well then vader ends up coming out and he comes out to the wheelchair he's you know yelling you're not there's nothing wrong with you you're not a paraplegic or quadriplegic you don't have any broken bones and uh then he ends up hitting gold dust was well, he hits gold dust and gold dust falls out of the wheelchair and everything the nurse takes the alcohol bottle and just like throws it into vader's eyes and then takes the, the like because she has like a like a hairnet type thing on i forget what they call them but nurse is wearing stuff and like a face guard and everything she takes off and it's luna vachon so this is where luna and gold dust get hooked up together and this is gold dust mysterious lady that he's found that you know understands him and gets the real him and stuff and so she does that and, and then gold dust gets up and starts attacking vader and then they both um walk out together wearing really weird outfits and stuff because they both took their like hospital clothes off and they had weird outfits on underneath and so it just looks really funny. Then from there we have Michael Cole out for an interview and he brings out Sergeant Slaughter. And so it starts off with a video package of Sergeant Slaughter. So this is before obviously they introduced him coming out. But there's a video package of all his like career in the WWF. So like from back in the like early 80s or 70s or whatever all the way up into the mid late 80s early 90s when he was turned against America and stuff and then uh, more recent stuff. And so plays a video and he comes out and then Sergeant Slaughter says, you know, um, with this boot camp match I'm going to have with Triple H, I'm not going to come as Commissioner Slaughter because that's his real name, but I always call him Sergeant Slaughter. He goes, I'm going to be Sergeant Slaughter and he pulls out uh, or he pulls out his hat, his like military hat, puts it on. And then he starts talking about, he's like, I'm going to put on all my, you know, uh, I forget what they call him. I don't remember, but just like his like dressed down military clothes, he's going to put on his boots and have all just all his military stuff and he's gonna be coming in for a fight and then he starts saying you know helmsley's you know thinks he's all tough but he doesn't know the horrors of war and starts saying all sorts of stuff of like you know being bombed and waking up with a your friend dead next to you and just all sorts of horrific stuff that a soldier would experience in war and he's saying all that and how uh, Hunter hasn't experienced any of that stuff. So that's what makes Sergeant Slaughter. It's going to give him the upper hand in this boot camp match. And then from there we go into our next match of Brian Christopher coming out with his dad Jerry the King Waller. And he's taking on a guy named Flanagan which I don't know much about him. I don't know if he's Flash Flanagan. For some reason that name stuck in my head. It could be something completely different. But they did say he's from Indianapolis, Indiana which is where I live and stuff. So it's kind of interesting like a hometown person but I've never heard of him. But this is a next match in the light heavyweight tournament. So to start off as Brian Christopher and Jerry Lawler are walking down to the ring. Um, Flanagan goes up and does a tope con hilo out onto Brian Christopher as he's walking to the ring so you know he doesn't even get to the ring and Flanagan's already attacked him and hit him with a move and then throughout the match Brian Christopher ends up hitting a leg drop off the top rope on Flanagan to get the win and then Jerry the King Waller comes in and starts yelling at Flanagan and then punches him in the face that knocks him out of the ring so Lawler and Christopher just kind of like celebrate or whatever and stuff together before the segment ends. And that brings us into hour two of Raw, and it kicks off with DX coming out for the confront or confrontation or whatever with Bret Hart. And so they come out or whatever. And Triple H starts by uh, bringing up the whole uh, Sergeant Slaughter thing. And he sa says that he's not afraid of Sergeant Slaughter or any match he could want to be in. Um, I'm going to beat your ass. And then references stuff about his wife and other stuff along those lines like he did last week. And then it, he passes the microphone on to Sean. And Sean brings out Bret Hart. And so they play Bret Hart's music. And out comes a little person. 
in a Bret Hart mask. But they bring him into the ring and then Triple H grabs a microphone and starts saying stuff about Sean beating Bret. And uh, Sean's got his hand on top of the Bret's character's head and is like just holding his arm out and the Brett is like trying to punch so he's just like swinging his hands back and forth trying to hit him but obviously since he's so little he can't reach and the whole time this is going on Triple H is just saying all sorts of stuff about Brett and then Sean ends up putting the sharpshooter on it and the guy starts tapping out and Triple H is saying you know who's the best or if you whatever who's the main event who's the showstopper all that sort of stuff and the little thing saying Sean every time he asks a question. And so they end up releasing him out of that. And they stand him up or whatever. And they go to send him out. But um, before they do they end up slapping a WCW sign on his butt. And then sending him out. And so as he's walking up the ramp. The camera showing his butt. And it shows the WCW sign and stuff. And he goes to the back. And they're I think just kind of laughing about that or something. Well Jim Neihart ends up coming out onto the ramp. And confronts DX for doing this whole thing. And Sean says, you know, I'm going to do something for you that Brett never did. I'm going to give you a chance or opportunity or something. And he's like, I'll give you time, but you can decide if you want to join us tonight. If not, you're probably, you know, going to get beat up or something. I don't remember what he says. So they're offering Jim Neidhart to join the DX. And so later tonight, we'll get our answer if he did or not. Uh, then we have a little video package or just a video of Stone Cold and he's going out to dinner or having dinner or whatever with the winners of the Super Supper sweepstakes that they had, um, I assume, before Survivor Series or could have been at Survivor Series like the winner was announced, I don't remember. But um, whoever the winner was, it shows Stone Cold going to dinner with them. And then that goes into our next match of Sagi Savio Vega taking on Ken Shamrock. And as the match is going on, Miguel from the Los Bariquas ends up coming down. And he attack Ken Shamrock while he's on the outside. And Savio's in the ring distracting the referee. And so Miguel's just beating up. Ken Shamrock and then back inside the ring a little bit later Ken Shamrock ends up doing his snap or he snaps or whatever as they call it where he just goes crazy and so he's able to evade an attack from Miguel and Savio it's because they're both you know trying to beat up on him two on one but he's able to outsmart them or just you know not be hurt by them or whatever I don't know what to call it but he's able to eventually get the win by putting the ankle lock on Savio and Savio taps so Shamrock wins the match then next up we have the Nation of Domination coming out to the ring and Michael Cole comes out and tries to interview him but as soon as he starts to ask some of the rock takes the mic from him and kicks him out of the ring and he takes the mic and says uh, get out of here you jabroni so it's the first time I've heard the rock say jabroni which is a big part of his lingo so it's uh, cool to hear that for the first time and then the rock just starts cutting the promo on stone cold and stuff and as he's doing it, the microphone keeps like cutting in and out so like every so many words like every other word or something like you can't understand or hear what he's saying because the microphone cuts out and then the crowd starts chanting rocky sucks and as it does that the camera like zooms out and up on the titan tron you can see that Rocky sucks is appearing on the Titan Tron, so it'll be like Rocky and then sucks. So it's like going along, like trying to get the crowd to chant or whatever, but it's up on the Titan Tron. And so it's funny. And so the Rock notices that, and then the lights start going on and off and everything. And so commentary mentions something must be going on back in the truck and stuff. And then it goes back there in Stone Cold sitting, like it shows him back with a guy sitting at like a board with all sorts of switches and stuff. And Stone Cold just pushing all sorts of stuff, making it look like he's doing it. And stuff in Stone Cold makes he says it. I didn't write it down, but he said something about like. Uh, but he makes reference that this was in the past, not current or something like that, which they would make no sense. But it um, is showing the Rock in the ring and stuff like that. It goes back to the Rock in the ring and it like kind of zooms out, and then Stone Cold standing or comes in the ring behind him and then starts attacking. So that's why I mean like it's interesting because the Rock or Stone Cold, you know, pretty much said, you know, I'm not in the truck right now, so that'd be like, well, then where is he in the arena? Obviously. And so that means the Rock should be looking out for him, but Stone Cold, you know, is able to sneak up behind him and stuff. And so the Nation of Domination ends up running down to help because the Rock ended up sending him to the back to go after Stone Cold in the truck or to find out what was going on and stuff. So the Nation ends up coming, comes down to help the Rock and so the Rock's able to escape. Stone Cold runs out, grabs a chair and comes back in and starts like swinging it at the Nation and gets them out of the ring. And they all go up the ramp and the Rock starts posing with the title belt and stuff, of course, which is Stone Cold's Intercontinental title belt. The Rock's posing with it and Stone Cold says, you know, I'm going to get that title back from you. And then he says, hey Rock, here's a 
bird for you to enjoy for Thanksgiving. And then he flips the middle finger to him and stuff. And so I just thought that was kind of funny. So we have, of course, Thanksgiving. By the time this is uh, going out, it'll have just been a few days past Thanksgiving. So I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, but so I just thought that was kind of funny. Next up, we have what's supposed to be a match between Crush from the DOA taking on Jeff Jarrett. So this is supposed to be Jeff Jarrett's first match back. And so Crush comes out and then they start waiting for Jeff Jarrett and like shows a camera in the back because commentary mentions that in Jeff Jarrett's contract it says that a camera must follow him from the back all the way to the ring. And so the camera's in the back in the locker room and Jarrett's like freaking out and yelling at some guy. And he's saying that he won't wrestle because not all the necessary things that he had in his contract were met. And so since Vince can't keep up his end of the contract, Jarrett won't do his by wrestling. And I think he mentioned stuff that's wrong, but I don't remember exactly what he said. But so then it goes back to the ring. And so the ring announcer uh, says that Crush ends wins by forfeit or since Jeff Jarrett forfeits or whatever. So Crush gets the win. And soon after the arena goes dark and Kane's music starts playing and Kane comes out. And as soon as he hits the ring, Crush starts attacking him, trying to fight him off. But Kane's, you know, like no selling the shots and stuff. But Kane ends up hitting the choke slam and a tombstone on him, which then causes the DOA to come running out to try and help Crush. And then officials come out too. And I believe while they're, the officials are trying to separate, Jerry Briscoe ends up backing up there, bumping into Kane. And he turns around and they're freaking out when Kane grabs him and hits a choke slam on him. And that goes into our main event for the night, which is Vader taking on Shawn Michaels. And so when Vader comes out, he shows that he has a bandage on his eye. So on one of his eyes, I don't remember which one, from the alcohol attack earlier. And then DX comes out and Shawn grabs Mike and he introduces their new member of Jim Neidhart. And so he did end up joining them or whatever. And so he's there at ringside with it. Um, at one point in the match, Vader ends up doing a match taking Shawn Michaels out. And after he does it, Vader does a suck it to Shawn Michaels. So I thought it was kind of funny that someone's reversing it on him. And then Shawn ends up sending Vader to the outside and Jim Neidhart and Triple H start attacking him. And Shawn's in the ring distracting the referee. So, um, it's, and Neidhart's really going in on the attack. Like Triple H is doing a little, but most of the attack is done by Jim Neidhart. So it's really showing, you know, that he's on there side and stuff that he's doing most of the work in the attack but back inside the ring a little bit later vader ends up going up for the vader bomb but triple h comes up and throws a cup what they say is a cup of hot coffee into vader's face so they're like he had alcohol in his eye now he has hot coffee and stuff so they blinded vader and um he falls off the or he comes off the turnbuckle or whatever and sean's up at this point and he ends up hitting a sweet chin or two sweet chin music on vader one is in the back of the head when he's like trying to rub his eyes out and then vader you know goes down from that and he gets back up and sean hits him with a normal sweet chin music in the face and uh knocks vader out sean gets the pin off of that and then dx comes in the ring and they're celebrating and they're standing there with triple h jim Neidhart, and sean michaels and they all have their hands raised up there well, Tri uh, China goes up behind Jim Neidhart and hits him with a low blow, taking him out. And then all of DX starts beating him up and Sean hits him with a sweet chin music. And then they just continue to beat him up as the screen goes blank. So I thought that was really fun and interesting Raw, like nothing amazing happened. But I just thought it was fun and it, it seemed to go really fast. I mean, you know, the time was normal but it seemed just with all the stuff going on it went really fast but that will now lead us into our nitro which is nitro 115 and it took place in saginaw michigan and it drew a 3.88 so we're less about uh 0.9 away or whatever 0.7 i guess it'd be closer from raw so they're um raw's kind of closing in but i don't think they get really much closer than that but um to start out the show the end of it shows the nwo coming um from the back so it shows them just like standing in like a corner of something because the arena they're in is pretty small but it just shows them like in some sort of like entrance area type thing um uh, but it's real small and it just shows them and then they all start walking to the through the back to the ring and a camera follows them the whole time and they walk out to the ring and as they're walking out someone ends up grabbing a sign i don't remember who it is but they get up in the ring and hogan has the sign and he holds it up and it says uh, bischoff owns vince so it's just you know showing that eric bischoff is uh beating out vince and stuff and so it's kind of like rubbing it in his face 
and they in, um, then goes into the stuff and I think maybe Eric Bischoff does a lot of the talking before Hogan does or something I don't know there's a, just everyone in the ring so it's hard to tell what goes on but uh they end up bringing up that Scott Hall was the winner of the World War 3 match because this is the night after World War 3 but of course he did it with the help of Hulk Hogan and Kevin Nash that was dressed up as Sting. And then Hogan gets on the microphone and says that uh, he's not scared of competition or anything like that. I don't know how he words it. But um, to prove it, he's going to put his title up for a match tonight. And saying, so if anybody wants to face him, they can come out. And he's like, and they motion up or look up for Sting and stuff. Expecting him to answer. But the Giant ends up coming out out on the ramp and so he says that he will take the match especially after being screwed the night before because he would have won the world war three if it wasn't for hogan and nash dressed as sting but as he's saying that jj dylan then up, ends up coming out and he says that he won't allow um the giant to wrestle because the giant has his arm in a cast from the scott hall attack last week and so he says the only way that he'll let giant wrestle is if the giant shines the release so if he gets injured anymore it, wcw is not responsible so they go back to sign the thing and ends that segment. Then next up we have our first match of some team called Disorderly Conduct. And they're taking on the Scots or the Steiner brothers. And I don't know who Disorderly Conduct is. They I think during one point in the match towards the very end they mentioned the names. And it was like Nasty Bill and Dirty Tom. I don't know what the name was. Just something like that. Just um, weird names but I don't remember what they were. But as soon as uh, the Sky uh, Steiners get to the ring disorderly conducts attacks them before the bell even rings but the Steiners are quickly able to get the upper hand after that and then the Steiners dominate pretty much the whole entire match and they end up hitting this Steiner bulldog off the top rope to get the pin but um, I did notice because uh, kind of like a doomsday type thing or whatever so Scott Steiner ends up picking the guy up lifting him up on his shoulders and then Rick Steiner jumps off and doesn't get in this case the bulldog and Scott kept like struggling to get the guy up like he'd start to pick him up and the guy would start falling like forward so it's got to have to put him down try it again and they just did it like multiple multiple times and then the guy just like started to like fall both ways so he'd start to fall back and Scott would like grab onto his legs to hold him up and stuff it was just funny watching him try and struggle with the guy so the Steiners win against these people I've never heard of then we get our first Nitro Girl segment of the night and um, this one was kind of interesting because they were dancing in the ring and one of them towards the very end gets up on a turnbuckle and she does like a front flip off of the ring so she like does a full rotation lands on her feet and then does like a roll across the ring like a tumble across the ring and then she goes up to the other turnbuckle across from it gets up on that and then does a back flip and lands on her feet so I just thought that was interesting I've never seen him do that before so that girl's got some talent then next up we have the match of Ming coming out with Jimmy Hart against Booker T coming out with Jackie um at one point in the match Booker T ends up hitting his spin just like a spin kick I don't know if it's his or the move he does a lot but a spin kick on Ming and that sends Ming over the top rope out to the floor and I just so I just thought that was kind of interesting that most people can't even do like a clothesline to someone outside onto the floor properly but Booker T can hit a spin kick and send Ming over the top rope um, but later in the match Booker ends up countering a power bomb by Ming and he's able to roll Ming up for the pin on that and so of course that pisses Ming off and so Ming immediately puts the tongue and death grip on the Booker T which then causes Stevie Ray to come running out and he's got a wooden chair like folding chair and he comes up and hits Ming on the head with it the chair smashes in the pieces but since he hit Ming in the head and Ming's a bar uh, Samoan and all that sort of stuff you can't hit or hurt him by hitting him in the head at least that's what we're taught by wrestling and so Ming gets up mad about that and so he grabs a, the tongue and death grip on Stevie Ray and at this point Barbarian has come running into the ring and so it ends with uh, Stevie Ray falling to the death grip the next up we have a whole uh, segment thing, I don't know, know how to exactly call it, but it's about um, J.J. Dillon trying to get Raven to sign a contract. So we get a replay of World War III where J.J. Dillon came out and told Raven that tomorrow night on Nitro, so tonight, that Raven has to sign a contract or he won't be allowed to show up anymore at, in WCW. So at this point Raven's like not on contract or anything. And so they're trying to get him to do that. So it then goes into current or on Nitro here, and it's Mean Gene, and he brings out J.J. Dillon, and so they walk out to around ringside where Raven's sitting with all the flock, and it, like as soon as they start talking to him, some guy like push past Mean Gene and jumps around, joins him in the crowd, and it's Scotty Riggs. So now Scotty Riggs has joined ra with ra um, Raven and the flock, so we end up joining with his one eye or eye patch and stuff, and Raven ends up uh, answering. 
to JJ and Mean Gene, and he says that he has signed a contract, but he's changed it, and it's pretty much that he will wrestle who he wants, however he wants, so with whatever type of match he wants, when he wants, where he wants, all that sort of stuff, that he gets to make the calls on everything, and every match has to be a no DQ match. And so that's like his stuff and Jay-Z's like, that's fine for now. We'll just, we'll work out more, you know, more details later, but at least you sign the contract and stuff. And then that leads into our next match of Chris Benoit that's supposed to be taking on Raven, but Chris Benoit comes to the ring and then Raven jumps the railing and Flock comes with him. But Raven ends up sending Sick Boy into the ring to fight the match for him. And then it's also pointed out that there's um, a new guy in the crowd i don't know who it is but um he's got like short white hair and he just keeps like cheering on sick boy the whole time and stuff and he's mentioned a lot on commentary throughout the night because he keeps standing up and like cheering and yelling or whatever and stuff and tony finds like that guy needs to be told to sit down especially um you know for courtesy of the people that are, you know the fans that pay tickets and are sitting behind him and stuff he needs to sit his butt down and stuff but i don't know who he is but it's just some new guy but in the match ben wall ends up hitting his flying headbutt and starts to go for the pin, but the flock comes in to attack him, and Benoit starts fighting them all off, and he's able to get the cross face put on Sick Boy to get the pin, and then immediately after that, the flock comes in and starts to attack Benoit again, and Saturn comes in and puts the rings of Saturn onto Benoit. Then next up, we had an NWO commercial, so a black and white commercial, and it's just all about um, the members beating up on Larry Zabisco and all the stuff that's happened with Scott Hall and Eric Bischoff and stuff with Zabisco, which that then causes back in on Nitro, Larry Zabisco to come out to the ring, and of course he's mad that he's like, I can't believe you wasted your money on that stuff or whatever for that commercial, and so he calls Scott Hall out to come out and uh, sign the contract so they can fight or whatever. And then the NWO music starts playing and instead of anyone coming out, papers from the ceiling start falling so it kind of looked like confetti. But um, it's pictures of the Eric Bischoff painting Larry Zbysko so Bischoff with his foot on Larry Zbysko's chest as Larry's laying on the mat. And they just all fall down from the ceiling and so that pisses Larry Zbysko off even more and then Eric Bischoff eventually comes out and uh, he starts making excuses for Scott Hall. You know, Scott Hall's got this, he's got that, so he can't be in any matches and stuff. And Larry's like, well, how about if, I, since I can't face Scott Hall, how about you? And so um, he challenges Eric Bischoff instead, and Eric agrees to a match. And he says, fine, you want a match, you got a match, that sort of stuff. But doesn't go into any more detail. And this part ends off with a Nitro Girls dance segment in the ring, which then leads into our number two. And the first match of the hour is Prince Iakea taking on Alex Wright coming out with Deborah. So pretty early on in the match, Deborah gets up on the apron and she's like yelling at something. I don't know like what she's yelling about or anything. But eventually Alex Wright starts to notice because the ref's like, you know, telling her to get down. So Alex, Alex Wright starts to notice. And he's yelling at her to get down. He's like, get your butt down and all sorts of stuff. And so it's causing her to distract him. And she's like, I can't. My... And I don't know if she says it, but commentary says, I think her dress is stuck in the turnbuckle because she's standing right at the turnbuckle and stuff. And she keeps like looking down like towards her leg, like towards the turnbuckle that she'd be caught on. But I think she's just trying to stand there, make sure she's up against it. So, you know, so people are like her, you know, her dress is a foot away or anything. And so making sure she's making contact to, you know, be more realistic that she's caught. But as I said, it causes a distraction and Prince IK is able to get the win by doing a cross body off the top rope onto Alex Wright again because of the distraction. And so that pisses Alex Wright off since he lost. And so he gets on the microphone or just starts yelling stuff and says that he's done with Deborah and that he doesn't want her around anymore. Then next up we have Disco Inferno taking on the Macho Man who comes out with Miss Elizabeth. And um, so early on in the match, Miss Elizabeth is grabs a hold of Disco's leg as he's bouncing off the rope. And so it trips him up. And so he gets out of the ring and starts yelling at her and stuff. Which then, because that Macho Man comes out after him. And he gets Disco's attention. And so Macho Man's, you know, like yelling at him and stuff. And Miss Elizabeth comes up behind and pushes Disco. And Disco goes flying headfirst into the ring post. So she's starting to get a lot more dirty in her manners at ringside and stuff. Again, nothing you would see ever see in WWF with the way they treat her. And then back inside the ring, Macho Man gets the upper hand and he ends up hitting an elbow drop and then goes up for a second one and then gets the pin off of that. And then immediately after the match, he does two 
eventually does two more elbow drops. He attacks the ref in the meantime. And then Miss or Elizabeth has the spray paint and they spray paint Disco. And so they're really going all out on him. And then Miss Elizabeth in the end very very end puts his her foot up on Disco's chest and then Macho Man gets down and counts the three on him. So Disco once again, I get, even though it's not a real match, being beat by a woman. And then they have um, some cool things which I probably won't point out unless it's a new one anymore. But they are now doing like at little advertisement things for video games. So the first one they have for the night is WCW Nitro game and it's on the PlayStation. So they just mention the game and just like show it and stuff. And then it goes to commercial and comes back and we have a Nitro party for a guy in Atlanta. I don't remember the name or anything but just shows him at his house and like oh it was like a whole family instead of like a fraternity or whatever like it has been the past couple ones they've shown but just a guy in his house with a bunch of family and that goes into our next match of brad armstrong taking on dean malenko and so this match was very slow and like i was like oh my god this match is taking forever and like is it ever gonna end but they did a lot of good like technical holds and reversals and stuff in the match but they just did it so slow though but in the end dean malenko gets the win with the texas this clover leaf over Brad, which of course, if you don't know, Brad Armstrong is Road Dog's brother, so it's kind of interesting that they're both, you know, on TV right now, but at different times. Brad's not very common on WCW. It's the first time I've seen him since watching all this stuff. Then next up, we have Mean Gene coming out, and he brings out Steve McMongo McMichaels out for an interview, and of course, soon after the interview starts, Deborah comes walking out, and she interrupts, and uh, she's just trying to get with Steve McMichaels again, so saying like. I just I thought about it long and hard and I want to be back with you again and come on baby don't you want to be with me again or something like that and Steve ends up telling he's like if you want to do something for me you can turn around and get the hell out of here and stuff and uh, he ends up saying something about doing whatever he wants with her or something that like makes Mean Gene make a comment or something like that but I just thought it was kind of funny then that goes into a Nitro Girl segment which then goes into a match of Buff Bagwell taking on Chris Jericho and so in this match it's pretty much just a back and forth match so one person have the upper hand then it switches over and it's about e even time between who has the upper hand in the match but throughout the match Jericho ends up trying for many pinfall attempts but every time Buff Bagwell kicks out of him and but in the end Buff Bagwell ends up winning with the blockbuster his finishing move Next, we got a recap of Kurt Henning and Ric Flair from the U.S. title match at World War III. And so showing like what happened in the match, which Kurt Henning ended up winning or, you know, staying the champion. And that goes into the match of Kurt Henning taking on Ray Trailer then for the U.S. title. Um, So as I think as Ray Trailer's maybe walking out or some, someone's walking out. Mike Tanay mentions on the commentary that he's working on a video for Brian Pillman. And it'll be a dedication and stuff for his family to raise money for the family. Family and help out Brian Pillman's wife and everything. So that's just a nice thing that Mike Tenay is doing or WCW in general is working on and stuff to help Brian Pillman. Uh, but throughout the match it's a notice or point out whatever that Bobby Heenan keeps on like showing support for Kurt Henning and saying stuff and so Tony Schiavone starts question questioning him asking you know are you supporting NWO are you part of NWO and all sorts of stuff and he's like no I just support good workers and stuff or something along those lines but he just keeps pulling for Kurt Henning so towards the end Ray Trailer ends up pulling Kurt Henning into the ring post so like crotch you know slam, pulling his crotch into the ring post and then he gets in and hits the trailer slam his finisher on Kurt Henning so which would lead to a pinfall but before he can get the pin the NWO comes running out and they attack Ray and again on him Macho Man's there and he ends up hitting the elbow drop on him and then they uh spray paint him his chest or Ray Trailer's chest and stuff Scott Hall does and he tries to like write on his face with what looks like a sharpie but he's like drawing on his face and nothing's going down and uh, commentary mentions oh he must have too much sweat on his face or something something it's not allowing the marker to stick and stuff so it's just funny that he tried it and then they went over to the spray paint sprayed that and then he went back to the marker trying to do it and it just wouldn't go on his face and then we got our other game ad for the night and this time it's for wcw nitro I don't know what they call it, WCW versus Nitro, WCW slash Nitro, I don't know for sure, but it's WCW NW World Tour, and this is for the Nintendo 64. So there we got two games out for WCW that they have, both by THQ and for two different systems. And then that goes into a replay of the Scott Hall and Giant, the Giant match from last week, so again, where Scott Hall injured the Giant's hand and couldn't. 
uh, didn't allow Giant to do the choke slam that way. And then the events at World War Three with the Giant being attacked and Scott Hall winning the match and stuff. And that goes into our main event of the Giant taking on Hulk Hogan for the title and Hogan ends up coming out with Vincent. So as soon as the match starts, Hogan starts to attack G Giant's right arms, his arm that's in the cast and just starts beating on stuff. And soon after, um, it goes up to commentary and Eric Bischoff comes walking out and Rick Rude's with him and they end up taking over commentary and so they just do commentary on this match. And uh, back in the match at one point Giant ends up hitting the choke slam on Hulk Hogan but he ends up hurting his hand in the at that time too and so he's you know just kind of writhing in pain from that not able to get the pin on Hogan. And at this point a Sting comes up or ends up walking out and he walks up to ringside and Giant's like laying right by the apron and his arms kind of out or whatever and Sting grabs hold of it, it like stretches out and then takes the baseball bat and smack like just hits his uh, arm with it and then of course you know it's Kevin Nash because it's a real tall guy with like grayish hair and stuff long gray hair not like stings and so Kevin Nash is being sting again and attacking the giant and it was about this time that I noticed that there was a sign at ringside or it's like first couple rows somebody had a sign and they had it all blurred out so I'm interested to know what was on the sign that they um, ended up blurring out like I don't know what it said or anything but the NWO ends up running out to join in on the attack on Giant that you know started by Kevin Nash or whatever and so Kevin Nash is in the ring at this point and he's starting to like pull and rip the cast off of the Giant's arm and then um the crowd starts going crazy and they're looking up and you see a sting coming down from the ceiling and he drops all the way down and he, once he hits the ring he goes through the ring mat and so he like drops through the ring and stuff and of course you can tell by this point that it's a dummy and so I think it's like Hulk Hogan and maybe Kevin Ash and stuff are taking turns with the bat and they're just like hitting the sting on the head because his head's like the only thing sticking sticking out from the ring and so they're just like hitting him on the head with it and then they pull the dummy out of the ring and they just start beating it up in the ring like holding it up in the middle of the ring and Hogan and stuff will just be hitting it on the head with the bat and everything and at one point when they're standing there watching macho man ends up getting hit with some item a pretty big item i don't know what it was if it was a cup or something else someone threw but they threw it and hit him like in the chest and so you see him like flinch and stuff and then he's like looking like he's or acting like he's all mad and stuff which he probably is so he's not really acting but it's just funny that someone was able to hit him directly and uh, get him all mad and stuff but that's what happens as the show fades to black so that's it for the rewind this week where again we covered raw 235 and nitro 115 again i would probably go with raw because once again it's hard to beat the shorter time period because nitro went over 20 minutes about or or thereabout in time and then um again nothing really major happened and then raw this week had the follow-up with uh, the mini bret hart and then jim nightheart joining with dx and stuff so i just thought that was interesting so I would probably give the upper hand a roll once again this week. But that's going to be it for the Monday Night Rewind podcast this week where we cover the Raw and Nitro. So again, you can find this on YouTube at Awesome Nerd Show. Every weekend we have the post where it's just a video with audio playing of this so you can hear it. And so it's kind of like a podcast version. And then you can also find the podcast on SoundCloud or Apple Podcasts where you can find it on their Monday Night Rewind and find the podcast there and actually listen to it as an actual podcast. And in iTunes, you can download it and so it appears in your phone every time the episode goes up. And you can listen to it whenever you want. And don't forget to subscribe and download the podcast there and then subscribe on YouTube to see the new episodes every single week. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.